This week's blog post is the first of two on Frederick Edwin Church's home, Olana. Olana is the home of Frederick Edwin Church, 1826 to 1900, who was one of the most prominent members of the Hudson River School. Like all its members, he specialized in painting spectacular American scenery, but Church painted both North and South American vistas. By age 20, Church was well known. During the 1850s and 60s, he was among the most famous artists in the U.S. and Europe. His enormous canvases, such as Heart of the Andes at the upper right from 1859, drew paying audiences of thousands. That painting is about five and a half feet wide. In 1870, Church and his wife began construction of a home overlooking the Hudson River in Greenport, New York. Church designed the building himself with the assistance of Calvert Vaux, one of the creators of Central Park's Greensward Plan. The house, Olana, is an appealingly eclectic mix of Persian, Italianate, and Victorian styles. It contains some 40 paintings by Church and his circle of friends, among whom were Thomas Cole and Martin Johnson Heed. The house is also filled with exotic items from Church's extensive travels, furniture, ceramics, carpets, metalwork, costumes, and more. In the best 19th century tradition, Olana is situated on a hill with a marvelous view. Church carefully landscaped his 250 acres to dramatically reveal vistas of the property and of the surrounding area, the Hudson River and the Catskill and Taconic Mountains. In an 1884 letter, 62-year-old Church wrote, quote, I can make more and better landscapes in this way than by tampering with canvas and paint in the studio. End of quote. Orlano was owned by the Church family until 1966. Because it became a museum, now a New York State Historic Site, without intermediate owners, it's one of the few examples in the U.S. of an artist's home and studio that's preserved intact. I had a wonderful combination tour of the house and grounds of Olana in August 2023, despite the fact that it rained off and on all day. If you visit, be sure to make a reservation before you go. The tours do sometimes sell out. The interior of Olana is fascinating and charming, but the outside is truly spectacular. So I'm going to tease you by showing you the interior in this post, and we'll look at the exterior and grounds next week. Incidentally, because this is an artist's home preserved intact, there are not many labels on things, so just enjoy the images. On the left is the dining room. On the right is the hallway with the stairs to the second floor. The left is part of the entrance foyer. And on the right is we're looking at the one of the archways near that chair. A lot of the ceilings and doors and door frames in Olana have custom stencils such as these, and they vary from room to room. On the left, gotta love a man who loves his books. And on the right, this is a hallway. You can just see stairs down to the basement. This is the family sitting room. It has the largest of Church's paintings that are kept at Olana. The painting is a dramatically composed view of Petra in Jordan. The fireplace, to make it related to the painting, it was clearly designed to complement it, has a sort of Moorish arch and motifs at the top of the woodwork. This is the interior of Church's studio, which is at one end of the house. You can see the stencils on the doors that open into the studio. As a teaser for next week's post, this is the view from Church's studio from the open porch next to it. On a day without rain, it would have been truly spectacular. One last image from inside on the right. That is a section of the wallpaper from the second floor. It's pretty amazing. Just a note, the images in these two posts are not completely representative of Olana. They're just the photos that came out best of all the things that I snapped pictures of.
you should definitely visit Olana yourself. But if you can't, visit Olana's site at least, which has fantastic view- photos and videos. It's olana.org. There are two more great examples of carefully preserved artists' homes and studios in the Northeast. One is the St. Gaudens National Historic Site, and the other is Daniel Chester French's home, Chesterwood. DianeDurantiWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, architecture, and my other obsessions. To join the Sunday Recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on the screen or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on DianeDurantiWriter.com. As always, thank you for listening.